And if I may, um, before I recognize Mr. Carey, if I may, Dr. Kosar, um, just kind of follow up on that line of questioning. Um, you know, if I might put you on the spot, there is one thing, if there's one thing that this committee could do uh, to make the agency the best it could be to serve Congress in the most efficient, effective way possible, what would you suggest that that would be? Well, that is putting me on the spot. Uh, but I'm here to testify truthfully, and by my assessment, most policies that affect the service of CRS to the Congress come from the front office of the agency. And so if you want to affect the most change in the most immediate way, you change leadership. And moreover, if you change the statute and you change the regulations, you know, maybe you move the needle a bit, but ultimately anybody who studies organizational theory knows the importance of leadership. And quite frankly, I think based upon the FEVS result and based upon the kind of long-standing concerns that I've heard voiced about uh, the agency leadership itself uh, and the high levels of turnover, which are kind of a truth serum of, of sorts or an you know, indicator, um, you know, those of you who follow sports are probably familiar with the phrase, you know, the coach has lost the locker room. I mean, that's, I think that's where we're at. Um, Five-year technology project, $20 million, staff are still laboring with Word 2016, which is buggy, video calls dropping off, laptops clunking out. None of this is new. This was happening when I was there. Again, it's part of the reason I left, because it was frustrating, because I'm trying to help Congress and be as fast as I can, and the stuff was not working, and people were not fixing it, yet money was being spent. So, yeah, I, don't, I say it with a heavy heart. I don't say it with any malice, but I think that's just, the facts aren't what they are. I recognize Mr. Kerry for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Dr. Kozar, you went to, uh, you got your master's and doctorate degree from New York University. Can you tell the, the committee where you received your bachelor's degree? The Ohio State University. <laughs> Just want everybody in the room to hear that. My alma mater. Um, I, I, so you, a lot of the questions that I, that I was going to focus on have already been asked, but do you think there is a for lack of a better term, a disconnect between the congressional needs and the work of CRS and the products and the expertise that they have currently? I mean, you kind of touched on it, but can you go in maybe a little more detail into that? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I will give the agency uh, credit that over the last 15 years, um, there were some new alterations to the paper products, uh, the standard publications that were were made to make them a little more uh, accessible, uh, particularly for an audience that's increasingly on mobile. Um, but I confess, you know, when I was looking through the slides that Mr. Dunn had up on there um, and comparing that innovation with the innovation of a one-page summary being added to a CRS report, uh, that kind of pales. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, and this riffs off your, your stuff, like in many cases staff have questions that their, their skills, tech skills are pretty good. They, they grew up on Excel and all that sort of stuff. They, they know how to use this sort of stuff. Like if CRS was able to have more of that stuff online, then staff could do a little self-serving of like, well, let's take these data and these data. And, and let me kind of follow up on that because what you're saying, I mean, do you think the CRS staff actually have a good understanding of what our congressional staff actually do on the Hill? I think uh, they have a pretty good understanding because you know most requests that pour into CRS come into the analysts directly. Mm -hmm. And the more you just get these requests, the more you learn about like, what do people want? What do people want? Uh, I think where the trouble comes is that when you know congressional staff are asking for stuff and then CRS analysts and reference librarians are saying, oh, I have to ask my boss if we can do that. And then the answer is no, no, you're not allowed to provide that in that format. You have to give them a standard report. You have to give them a this or a that. Um, and that's a problem. Uh, Dr. Hoser on the rest of the panel, thank you for your testimony today. I think as we look at modernization, um, you know, I, I first came to the Hill in 1995. This is back in a time when everybody still had a refrigerator uh, in their office, yet they received two buckets of ice every single day. Modernizing is not a new concept, but it's one that we must do, and we must do it in a bipartisan way. And I thank you, gentlemen, for your testimony. I yield back, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Kerry. And um, I do want to give uh, Mr. Coffin an opportunity. I believe that you also have an infographic that um, 
we have available. Um, and so I wanted to maybe see if our staff could pull that up. And if you could talk a little bit about uh, the interactive graphic that you also have available. Yeah, abs absolutely. This is um, one of the, the products on our website that we put out a couple years ago. I mentioned a congressional dashboard, as our hopes and dreams for having uh, live data at people's disposal instead of just PDF reports. And so this is something we put out um, during the COVID pandemic to try to allow people to track what, how COVID was affecting the world. Uh, in, in, the, in the United States, you know, what was happening with the economy, what was happening with people's standard of living, what, um, you know, what was happening actually with the government, was the government spending more money? And so we put this kind of thing out, um, and it, it live updates, it, it's still up to date today. We haven't actually put much into it over the past couple of years because the pipelines are built and continue. If I um, may, where are you yeah. pulling the data? The data comes entirely from government sources, federal government sources. Um, well, with the exception of the COVID data, which comes from the states themselves. Right. But the, um, we, uh, we, we pull mostly from the Census Bureau, the Bureau of Economic Analysis for this particular product. Um, I think we have the inflation graphic pulled up. We also, you know, you can explore further um, and click in and see, for example, you know, this is the, the housing and gas part of inflation, things like that. And um, for places where there's local data, we actually can offer your state view as well um, through this tool. And so this is something that, you know, the investment was there. We can't answer people's one-off questions. There's 330 million Americans. We couldn't do it. But if we can create products like this, they can answer a broad swath of questions. Um, we really think we can um, impact, and, and we think you all deserve this same kind of uh, resource. I think this is fantastic. I love dashboards. I also love infographics because I think it's just quick snapshots of information that you can share with individuals. So uh, really uh, fantastic resource. Um, 